The universe was created with the Big Bang, at least that's the current theory. But where did the laws of nature come from in the first place? Today I have a very interesting paper that puts forward a possible explanation. The paper is boldly titled How to Make a Universe by Paolo Bassani and Joao Maguejo. It's a new mathematical framework for the evolution and natural selection of laws. They allow random changes to their natural laws and show that, if one does this, the universe eventually settles into the stable, ordered space-time with matter that we observe today. In a nutshell, they give mathematical support to the idea that our universe might have been born out of chaos. It's worth looking at the details. What they actually do is not let the laws in their entirety evolve. Concretely, they allow the constants of nature to change, or I should say more precisely, that what we think are constants of nature. These constants are, for example, the strength of gravity, or the strength of the electromagnetic interaction, or the masses of particles. They also allow the speed of light to change, and even more boldly say that the speed of light could once have been different from the speed of gravitational waves. In Einstein's theories, they're always the same. And all these constants, so their idea, could have started from any value in the early universe. Then they allow small random changes to the constants, and these changes in return affect the frequency at which the constants change. If you let the constants of nature vary, you'll violate all kinds of conservation laws, most importantly energy conservation. So if you allow the constants of nature to change, you can create matter out of nowhere. This is an interesting idea for how our universe might have begun. At present, physicists assume that all matter and energy in the universe was created from the decay of a mysterious field called the inflaton field, for which, alas, there's no evidence. Most intriguingly, what they say in the paper is that if one allows the constants of nature to change this way, one finds stable pockets in which the constants become well, constant. You can see in this figure that after a lot of initial fluctuations, the values become stable. And one of the criteria to make that happen, they say, is that we have a neatly ordered space-time that can bend and curve under gravity, but no spontaneous creation of matter and no non-local infinite speed interactions across the universe. The reason is that in these cases, the mutation rate for the laws of nature would remain high. To give you an analogy, think of the constants of nature like grains of sand sprinkled on a plate with a speaker underneath it. The sound puts the plate into motion and makes the sand randomly jump around. But where the plate doesn't move much, there's not much jumping. So in those areas, the sand piles up. That is, the stable states in the end are those that are unlikely to randomly change. In the paper, they say that this is why our universe is the way it is, with conservation laws and causality and a finite speed of light. Let me be clear, though, that they did didn't say our universe is unique for what the values of the constants are concerned. This is the point of the paper. They're concerned with why the constants aren't changing. A similar idea was put forward about 30 years ago by Lee Smolin, who called it cosmological natural selection. Smolin said that the constants of nature change inside of black holes, and black holes then create a new universe with a different set of constants. In the new paper, they don't use anything with black holes, and they don't produce new universes either. They just must assume that the constants can change somehow. Joao Majuejo, one of the authors of the paper, by the way, also coined the term axis of evil for some suspicious alignments of CMB patterns. He's generally good with words and has written two most recommendable books, one about his fight with the cosmology mainstream, about accepting changes in the speed of light, and one about the life of the physicist Ettore Majorana, who mysteriously vanished. Vanished. My most vivid recollection of Joao was the day he yelled f 
you or through the PI lobby. Hey Joao, in case you're listening, as you see, you left an impression. Maybe more importantly, Joao is a rebel by nature and he has the technical skills to convert that rebellious spirit into solid theoretical work. I don't know if he's on the right track with this, but I think it deserves being taken seriously. We really need to do something about the vocabulary though. Changing constants sounds seriously funny. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.